Thank you all for joining us here at I-80 Sports, where today we continue our 32-part 2021 team previews. Tonight's team, the Dallas Stars. Thank you all for joining us here again at I-80 Sports. Thank you all for joining us here again at IED Sports. Make sure you check out our website down below, IEDsports.com, for all of our team preview coverage. And if you're here on YouTube, make sure you drop a like, comment, and subscribe for all of our team previews coming up. This is the start of the Central Division for us here at IED Sports. So we've got eight teams to preview in the Central Division, and maybe we're covering your favorite team. Only way to find out, check us out, and you can check out our website down below and on YouTube. And if you're on Twitter, make sure you follow us on Twitter at I80 underscore sports NHL. And if you're following already, thank you guys so much for following because we, we greatly value all of your support. I'm Brian. He's Tom. How you doing today, Tom? I'm doing well, doing well. And here we are to um, uh, preview a team that, as we were having a conversation a little earlier, a team that I don't know much about, a team that I used to know a lot about when they had the likes of um, uh, Mike Madonna, Brett Hall, Guy Carbono, Joe Neuendijk, just to name a few, back in the 90s when Ken Hitchcock was their coach. I have a funny Hitchcock story, but I can't say it on here because it's definitely not PG-13. But um, uh, it's the Dallas Stars and a team that's two years removed from being the Stanley Cup Finals. It's funny because I've got a Ken Hitchcock story that also relates to uh, more so Brett Hull when he played with uh, the Dallas Stars. And, well... I can't necessarily say it on air either, only because of uh, the context. So if you're interested, look up that story at some point. It's an absolute yeah. riot, especially to those who actually do play hockey. Yeah. But let's dive yeah. right into some 20, 2020 and 2021 team facts for the Dallas Stars. So starting right off, what was their record last year? So their record last year in a COVID-shortened season was 23, 19, and 14, which was good for 60 points, but they fell just short. They finished fifth in the Central Division last year. So a little bit disappointing, but we're going to talk about why they probably finished fifth instead of higher last year, especially with a lot of expectations on their shoulders. Being a Stanley Cup uh, being in the Stanley Cup Finals in 2020. So we're going to talk about that in a little bit. Uh, power play and penalty kill stats, they not too shabby. On the power play, they were at 23.57% on the power play, which is above league average at around 19%. So they actually did pretty well on the power play last year. Penalty kill-wise, they were right at league average, right at 79.08% on the penalty kill, and not horrible. You know, right at league average, but I know that Dallas will look to improve that this year. Leading scorers for the Dallas Stars were Joe Pavelski with 51 points, Jason Robertson with 45 points in his rookie season. Good for you, kid. And Rupe Hintz with 43 points last year as well in a shortened season as well. So some pretty interesting players near the top of that uh, leading scoring there for Dallas. Now let's talk about some key additions and subtractions from this past offseason. So additions onto this uh, Dallas Stars team are Ryan Suter, Braden Holpe, Michael Roffel, Yanni Hakanpa, Andreas Borgman, Luke Glendening, and Alex Petrovic. And subtractions? Uh, nothing too, too crazy here, but... Uh, one or two big ones. So Justin Dowling, Andrew Cogliano, Mark Pizik, Sammy Vatnin, Taylor Fudin, or uh, Fiedin rather, uh, Stephen Johns, Julius Haka, Jamie Alexiak to the expansion draft and technically free agency since he signed an extension with Seattle before the expansion draft, and Jason Dickinson who was dealt away to Vancouver. So now that we've gotten out of the way key additions and subtractions it's time to talk about some x factors and no we are not talking about ea sports nhl 22 x factors of course we are talking about our own brand of x factors who is pivotal to the dallas stars success this year tom i've done enough talking as per usual the beginning segments here it's time to hear from you who do you feel are x factors on the dallas stars this year well i mean where do i start here 
This team, as we know, made the Stanley Cup Finals, I mean, you want to say two years ago, because I guess it's correct to say two years ago, but it only was last October, believe it or not. I know with all that's going on in the world, that's crazy to, uh, it's crazy to put together. But the problem with this team that I see right now, or the biggest X factor here is, despite them having some nice seasons there for some younger guys, um, mainly Jason Robertson and Rupe Hintz, age is not on this team's side. Now, you, you need to hope that they both build on the rookie seasons, but what you're going to really need from this team this year, the biggest X factor, is for these guys on the older side to hold up their end of the bargain. And when I talk about these guys, I'm talking about guys like Jamie Benn. I'm talking about guys like Tyler Sagan, who is still a little young, but he's also getting older. Guys like Joe Pavelski. Um, they also gave Ryan Suter a decent deal over the summer. They're giving him a chance here, too, and it's looking like he'll be their number one defenseman. So... I'm curious to see what he can do because, like I said, he's the the, the uh, age factor is no longer on his side as well. So what they're really going to need is these guys who are kind of on the wrong side of 30 to really hold up their end of the bargain just in case guys like, say, Jason Robertson and Rupe Hintz do not have good second years. You know, they, 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 have a, they have a bust of a year. That's really the biggest X factor in my eyes. Yeah. So I completely agree there, but I'm going to dive in a little bit deeper to what you're talking about here. So for me, a couple of players come to mind for X factors and three players, particularly who missed a good chunk of time last year to injury. And that was, as you alluded to before, Tyler Sagan, Jamie Ben, and I'll also throw in Alexander Radulov in there as well. The three of them put up a combined 123 points in 198 total games between the three of them in 2020 in a shortened COVID season, the year that they went to the Stanley cup final, it was their combined effort and playoff performance that helped them get to the Stanley cup final. But lo and behold, the, between the three of them, they missed a very, very, very large chunk of time, specifically Tyler Sagan. And it was for that reason that I think Dallas also missed out on the playoffs. Another reason why I think they missed out on the playoffs this past year was also also missing Ben Bishop, their starting goaltender. That's another X factor in my mind. If Ben Bishop can come back to form, come back healthy, that can make all the difference for Dallas this year between the pipes. But that might also be the reason why Dallas picked up Braden Holtby in the offseason as well to maybe see if, okay, if Ben Bishop isn't quite ready, you at least have a stopgap there to maybe play 1B to Anton Hudobin. Um, other X factors in my mind uh, also include Jason Robertson, who, to be honest, would have been a Calder winner any other year except this year, but Kirill Kaprizov of the uh, Minnesota Wild had other plans for that. And we'll get to that once we discuss the Minnesota Wild uh, sometime next week. But um, Jason Robertson will look to capitalize on a strong rookie year in a sophomore effort. So we'll look to see what happens there. And the other one who I'm going to talk about more in the next segment, Rupe Hintz. Uh, based on uh, last year's finish for Dallas, I think it's imperative for – Tyler Sagan, Jamie Ben, Alexander Radulov, and Ben Bishop to have healthy seasons, or else Dallas might go the other direction, maybe stay where they were from this past season. Now we're going to talk about some breakout candidates. So who on this team could come to mind as somebody who could have a career year, really make a name for themselves this upcoming year? Tom, I'll start with you. Who's your breakout candidate for Dallas? Uh, my breakout candidate here is uh, somebody I mentioned a little bit above. It's Rupe Hintz. He's going to be looked to lead, he's going to be looked at to lead them offensively, especially like I said with the age factor with the other guys in the top six. He's over a point per game last year, and if you were to basically uh, do the math and average that out into a full eighty-two game season, he would have had thirty goals. So let's see how he fa how he fares here. You know, him scoring thirty goals is going to be a big big help to this team if he can re if he can build on what he did last year. Yeah, I'm going to elaborate on your point because to me, there's not a lot to choose from. One person that you probably could choose is like Jason Robertson, but you could really say he had a breakout year last year. This year would kind of be, all right, we already know what to expect from Jason Robertson. But I am going to go with Rupe Hintz here because I don't think a lot of people have actually recognized just how good he is. And I think, in my mind, he is one of the most underrated players in the entire NHL. And I think he's finally going to make a name for himself this year. Tom, to your point, you said he was above a point per game last year. So let's actually dive into uh, what that stat was. He quietly averaged 
over a point per game last year with 43 points in 41 games. So he was a little over a point per game. Uh, he was yet another player on the stars played by COVID and injury from this past year. And that's another thing to mention Dallas early on was plagued by COVID this year. That's another reason why Dallas did not quite perform to their expectation. They were just one of those teams like Vancouver, like New Jersey that were racked by COVID early on in the season and derailed them going forward for some, not for most. Um, but with a full 82 game season ahead, I'm honestly excited to see what Hintz uh, can do and how he'll perform. If he performs the way he did last year, he could be nominated for an offensive category by year's end. You average out what he did last year, 43 points in 41 games, and that averages out to a 86 point season. And what more can you ask for somebody on your top line at that point? That would be stunt that would be stellar if he can do that now speaking of potential uh first line production it's time to start talking about the potential opening night lineup here for the stars which we got to put it out there right now currently we are at the end of august beginning of september when we are talking about potential lineups so there's a lot of room for movement right now between now and the beginning of the season in october so we need to make sure that we preface any of our decisions here with that so that way everybody understands where we're coming from but without further ado let's talk about what that lineup could end up looking like at the beginning of the season so we're starting with our forward line one with our first line going from left wing to center to right wing we've got rupe hints with Joe Pavelski and Jason Robertson at right wing. Next on to line two, we've got Jamie Benn, Tyler Sagan, and Alexander Radulov, which a year ago, this would have been your number one line, but my how things have changed. So not bad for a line two on this roster. Moving on to line three, we've got Joel Kivaranta, Radic Foxa, and Dennis Gurianov. And then moving on to line four, we've got Michael Roffel with Luke Glendenning and Blake Como. On to the first line of defense. We've got Ryan Suter and Miro Heiskanen. And then to our second line of defense, we've got Essa Lindell with John Klingberg. And on to our third line of defense, we've got Andre Sekera with Yadi Hakankpa, which, got to say, this is a very different-looking defense to last year and the year before then. And the goaltending, I'm going to conservatively say if Ben Bishop can come back healthy, he will be your goalie 1A. Your goalie 1B is Anton Hudobin with another candidate in there of Braden Holtby. But we'll just see which one of the three is still on the roster come opening night. I think if there's anybody that could move from this roster, it could be Braden Holtby unless Ben Bishop starts the year off on injury reserve or Anton Hudobin for whatever reason. There's a lot of room for movement in here. But now, with that said, and again, segueing a little bit here, it's time to talk about some variables with this lineup. What could change between now and the beginning of the season, as well as what could change throughout the entire season? Because yeah, we're talking about the opening night lineup, but we will also want to look at the entire season as a whole here. So, Tom, what are some variables in your mind for this lineup? Well, all three of these goaltenders have pretty much seen better days, and I'm just wondering why you would have all three there. Now, you have to sit there and hope that you can have a good 1A, 1B tandem there with them. You have to hope one can shoulder most of the – maybe one can shoulder the load and the other one can just – the other two can chip in every now and then. The Rangers kind of did a similar thing two years ago where they had um, – uh, Igor was the starter, and it was kind of like Hank and Georgiev were uh, rotating in and out as backups. And maybe that's what they're thinking about doing. Maybe they're thinking about doing just a full free rotation. I don't know, but you have three goalies here. And I'm scratching my head. The three-goalie system, first of all, first off, never really works that well. And these are all three guys who have uh, seen better days in this league. Um, another, another variable here for me is the play of Jason Robertson or what could be the play of Jason Robertson. Like his lineman, Rupe Hints, he was also uh, projected to have over 30 goals if it were a full season. And like I said before, and I don't want to sound like a broken record. I know I always find myself saying this every time we're on. If him and Hints 
can have can build on what they did, and you can take the load off guys like Joe Pavelski and Jamie Benn and Tyler Sagan and even Alexander Radulov. This team can turn heads in a division that's not exactly it's stronger in the Pacific Division, but it's not exactly the strongest division in the league either. You know, outside of the Colorado Avalanche, there's a lot of there's a lot of uh, room for movement up and down the standings. So I think if they can if they can get the goal t- get get the goaltending together, get these two young players to build on what they've done, and still get contribution from these older guys, yeah, I think they could turn some heads. But all these variables need to need to go the right way for them. No, I agree. And to elaborate on your point in goal, I mean, who the hell starts in net at the start of the season for the Dallas Stars? I mean, I agree with you, Tom. This would be an amazing goaltending tandem Mm -hmm. if this were the year 2016. Speaking of which, Mm -hmm. you know what this reminds me of? And you might not remember this. You're a little bit younger than me. I don't know if you remember the 96-97 season. It was Pittsburgh's Mario's like last year before he retired for the first time. Pittsburgh actually ran a three goalie system. They had Tom Barrasso, Ken Reggett, and Patrick Laleem. And Patrick Laleem, I think, wound up playing more games than Tom Barrasso and Ken Reggett. I it remember that because Tom right Barrasso now. was was the the old man before the changing of the guard, and Tom Barrasso was no slouch at that point. Tom Barrasso yeah. was a fantastic goaltender who's been lost to uh, time, and I think kind of forgotten about by a lot of the uh, the '90s kids just how good he actually was, mm-hmm. and it's kind of a shame. But to get back to you yeah. know my point, That's it is very idea. similar to that situation. It yeah. is really, really, really similar to that situation. But you know now with injuries and inconsistent play plaguing the three of Ben Bishop, Anton Udobin, and Braden Holpe, I mean, who gets the short end of the stick here? That's going to be really interesting to see. And I'm also very interested to watch how Jason Robertson in a sophomore season plays alongside Pavelski and hits hints again. And I think that's going to be the key to his success in this upcoming year is familiarity and promoting even more chemistry between the three of these guys at the top of the line and also getting consistent minutes on top, you know, getting between, you know, 17 to 18 minutes a night will also help with his development. And now, so why I don't think Jason Robertson will have a sophomore slump as some people may call it after a rookie year, but it's time to start wrapping things up with our question of the day, which our question of the day stays the same as always, where do the stars finish in the central division this year? So Tom, I'll start with you. Where do you think the Dallas stars finish in this central division? Well, believe it or not, despite them having a not so stellar year last year, and so other rising teams in Minnesota and a team like Chicago who's trying to uh, recapture their glory days, I think right now there's just more of a um, – uh, I think it's more of just uh, – how do I put it? It's more of just like a uh, – I'm, I'm drawing a blank here, but it's more just like an obvious thing in Dallas right now. The question marks with some other teams that I mentioned as opposed to the question marks with the Stars – the ones with Dallas are a little more um, – uh, they're just a little more well-known, and I'm, I'm going to kill myself because the word I'm looking for, I'm drawing a blank on. So I'm going to go with second place here, believe it or not. I'm going to go with second place in the Central. Not a bad choice. This one for me is tough. It's For me, it's not that they won't make the playoffs because I actually – I honestly do think that this team makes the playoffs. I think it's more so just where they finish. I think if everyone stays healthy and – Goaltending is consistently good throughout the year. I think Dallas could finish in second this year. But if injuries played this lineup yet again this year, I think they could finish as low as fourth or you know potentially even lower depending on how other teams in the Central Division perform. So, you know, I'm going to be optimistic. And I'm going to say all goes well here for Dallas and that Dallas will finish in second place. Um, but... As always, what do you guys think? Do you guys agree with our takes? Do you guys disagree with our takes? Well, make sure you comment down below. Let us know. And while you're there, drop a like and subscribe for all of our previews coming up. If we didn't cover your favorite team yet, don't worry. We are going to be covering your favorite team in the coming weeks before the beginning of the uh, NHL season. And at some point, I'm also going to learn to speak English. It's going to be fantastic. But you can also check out our website down below, iadsports.com, for all of our team previews as well as the rest of our NHL content. Again, English. And you can also find our NFL, NCAA football, NBA, and MLS content there 
as well. And if you're on Twitter, make sure you follow us down below at I80 underscore sports NHL, which if you're following already, thank you guys so much for your support because we would not be able to do this without your support. But it's time to wrap things up here for the Dallas Stars today. I'm Brian. He's been Tom. This has been the Dallas Stars 2021-2022 team preview.